السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد Our dear viewers welcome to another live edition of our program Ask Huda and here is our phone numbers and contact information beginning with area code 002-023-855-131 area code 002-0100-546-9323 Two WhatsApp numbers, area code 001-347-80625. Last number is area code 001-361-489-1503. And we're also live on the Facebook page, M. Salah Official. Our first caller is uh, Sister Mariam from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Mariam. <coughs> Sister Mariam, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. So can I, can I, can I fast while I go for the sonu in the hospital in the doc for for the doctor? Sister Mariam, unfortunately, we didn't hear your question. Morning. Your voice is breaking off. Sister Mariam. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, go ahead. I hear you now. So I always fast on Mondays and Thursdays. But this Mondays, hello? Yes. I have to go for the sono. Okay. Can I fast while I go for the sono? Yes, you may fast while going for the ultrasound. It will not affect the validity of your fasting. May Allah bless you and your family. And include us in your dua at the time of breaking your fast, Sister Maryam from the USA. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the second question is Sulaihu Abu Ammar was asking, we're told that it is obligatory anytime the name of the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioned, we should send the blessings upon him. In fact, brothers and sisters, many of the scholars say that it is obligatory upon Muslims, upon hearing the name of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Allahumma salli ala Muhammad or to send a peace and salutation upon him by any of the recognized forms. Uh, the vast majority of the scholars are of the view that it is recommended and it's not obligatory. What is obligatory is to say it at least once in the lifetime. Uh, the ahadith are many in this regard. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Al-Bakhilu alladhi man dhukirtu indahu falam yusalli alay. It's a sound hadith collected by Imam Tirmidhi and authenticated by Imam Albani. May Allah have mercy on all of them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the true miser person is the one who hears my name and yet doesn't send the salutation upon me, doesn't say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Uh, so those who took the ahadith as literal, they said it's mandatory. Every time you hear the name of Prophet Muhammad, to send the peace and the blessings upon him. While the vast majority of the scholars are of the view that it is mandatory once in lifetime, but every time you hear his name, it is highly recommended to send the peace and the blessings upon him, but it's not mandatory. The hadith, which uh, also collected by Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ ذُكِرْتُ عِنْدَهُ فَلَمْ يُصَلِّ عَلَيْهِ May he be humiliated and disgraced. They said, whom? O Prophet of Allah. He said, a person who hears my name or my name is mentioned in his presence and uh, he doesn't send the peace and the blessings upon me. So we understand from that, that there is a difference of opinion. 
Some said it is mandatory every time, and some said it is highly recommended. And when we say it is between the mandate and the recommendation, for a believer, you better understand that every time you send a peace and a salutation upon Prophet Muhammad وسلم, you receive an immense and a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Man salla alayya salatan, salla Allahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends a peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad once, the Almighty Allah will bless him ten times thereof. And it is a response to the command of Allah in Surah Al-Ahzab when he began by himself, when he said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Umm Abdullah from the KSA. <coughs> How are you, Sheikh Salah? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you, Sister Umm Abdullah, for asking. Go ahead. Alha- alhamdulillah. Uh, Sheikh Salah, I have a question. I think uh, not only me, all the mothers of teenagers, maybe they are also having the same problem what I'm going through. So I discuss with my friends, with my husband, but still I'm not getting a solution for it. So I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Actually, I, ha- I have a teenager daughter. And she's so much addicted with the cell phone. Even she will sometimes lie that if I ask her, did you pray? She will say yes. And it, I know that she didn't pray. And whenever I will tell her to get up from the cell phone, when she is doing her cell phone, uh, she gets furious. She starts shouting at me. She bangs the door. So I discussed this matter with her father also. And according to him, he's telling, uh, be gentle with them. Just let her do what she likes. If you be strict with her, Maybe she will, uh, yeah, she will not listen, she will hate you. So according to my husband, just let it be like that. But what I feel, Sheikh, is that uh, as a mother, I should really have some rules in the house. I should let her understand that uh, there should be a time limit. So I'm confused what my husband is saying, just I will let her be what she's doing. Or as a mother, I should really control her. I should see how much she is, uh, what she's watching. So please uh, guide us and tell us what we have to do with these such kind of teenagers. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Sister Umm Abdullah. I got your question. Assalamu alaikum. Zishan from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Zishan. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have a simple question. Just uh, give me 30 seconds to explain it. It's related to a bank job. Okay. I'm an IT professional, and there is a company in Dubai. Uh, it's an IT company. They mm. are offering a job, and their client is a bank. Mm. And it's a commercial bank. It's not an Islamic bank. And the job is IT job. It's uh, like managing their data center. Uh, there is no direct work with the books, uh, accounts, and other stuff. But mm. I'm going to work for that bank, which is a commercial bank. Uh, I already asked this question. Uh, someone else and somehow they gave an answer they said because all of the bank's income is not based on interest they have uh, other halal businesses also uh, where they have current accounts and other stuff Mm -hmm. so if you work there there is no harm but uh, that answer doesn't satisfy me because at the end of the uh, you know it's a bank which is a commercial bank whether the IT company is paying me or the bank is paying me directly mm. my job is to work for the bank so mm. I just want to elaborate it a little bit so it will be طيب, Zishan yeah, I got your question thank you thank you Zishan inshallah I will answer you uh, shortly after I answer Umu Abdullah's question and you write Sister Umu Abdullah that's a challenge that all parents uh, face and confront. And uh, we got to learn how to handle this. Let's take this call first. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Nasser from Sudan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program, Brother Abdul Nasser. Go ahead. Raise your voice, please. Hello. I hear you. Go yeah, ahead. Go yeah. ahead. I wanted to know. I'm I'm a bit sick. Eh? Uh, 
they have discovered I have sugar diabetes. Mm. So I wanted to know if, uh, inshallah, uh, can I fast or no? That's what I wanted to know. You said they discover you have what? <clears throat> Abdul Nasser. I have sugar diabetes. You ha you're diabetic. You said they discover that you're diabetic, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and you want to know whether you can fast or not while diabetic? Yes. Oh, so, uh, get your question. All right, thank you, Abdul Nasser from Sudan. Sister Umm Abdullah, in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun ar ra'iyyatih. Every one of you is a guardian, and every guardian will be cautioned and held accountable for his responsibility, whether he shouldered it or not. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Khadija from the USA. Khadija, assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Wada. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, Sheikh. How are you? I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Go ahead, Sister Khadija. That's good, alhamdulillah. We are all fine too. Sheikh, I have a question about Salatul Duha. Mm. Uh, what is the difference between Salatul Duha and the four raka'as that the Prophet وسلم, said we should pray before Duhur? And also, I want to know, can we pray all the four raka'as with one uh, salam or we have to break it to two every time? Guy, Sometimes we're at work and you only have <clears> 10 <throat> minutes, you get to rush. Okay. I got your okay. question. Any other questions? No, that's everything. Okay, Thank I'm gonna you. put the whole the, the calls on hold until I answer Umm Abdullah's question, because Wallahi, I believe this is really important. Uh, I'm a father too, and I'm um, I'm facing the same challenge, and every parent nowadays, uh, it, it is not limited to playing games and consuming almost the entire time. If you let go, uh, any child will be addicted to playing games, and I have. Uh, high school students who by the grace of Allah joined medical schools and they dropped it. Why? Because they were like literally uh, you know obsessed with playing games and uh, whether on video games or on the phone or on the computer the games just simply consumed the entire time. Others like to browse YouTube, watch videos, uh, various social media I mean, there are a lot of attractions, whether good or bad, on the social media and on the smartphones, on using the internet. Uh, we can say also life has become literally impossible without all of that. But meanwhile, it has to be controlled. You know, adults, family members, grown-up people, spouses, sometimes they drop their responsibilities. They do not shoulder their responsibilities because they waste their time you know, watching and attending to social media and watching videos and the, and at work. I, I remember once I was finishing some paperwork at the electric company, uh, the water company. And uh, the guy pretended to be very busy. He has stacks of files in front of him. But I noticed that he's not doing anything. And uh, we're running out of time, and we're approaching the closing time, and he seems like to be like very relaxed. So when I took a glimpse over what he is busy with, he was hiding his phone in the drawer, and he was playing games. He was playing games, cards, on his smartphone. So uh, I had to ask him to kind of embarrass him, so who won? He said, what? I said, yeah, who won? You know, uh, he's not doing his work. People are stuck thinking and assuming that he's busy with something serious, but he was busy with nothing, just playing games or watching videos. If this is the case with the adults, with the people who are supposed to be responsible, so how would you blame the youth who have a lot of attractions that they find on the social media, on the YouTube, on many other uh, media platforms? All of that available at your fingertip uh, the phone. What I agreed with my children in this regard is that they have one hour every day that whenever they are studying 
Uh, I would like to, sh to see your achievement first. Did you revise your Sabah? And uh, I get the reports on a regular basis from their uh, teachers, whether the private tutors or the school teachers, okay? I like to sign it myself or hear it from their teachers. And basically, accordingly, they can enjoy the allowance time. They can spend an hour every day. If they didn't do good, then they would be grounded. In the past, grounded that they would be, you know, deprived from a lot of, uh, you know, attractions and even their allowance, their financial allowance. But now, <laughs> just taking the, self, the smartphone or the tab from your child is like, you know, you're taking his or her life away. We're neither extreme, or neither deprive them totally, nor let them enjoy it all the time because otherwise they will achieve nothing, brothers and sisters. We have to keep balance. So giving them an hour every day, basically if they achieve their uh, task and they finish it, it's, not, it, it's, it's fair enough. Also, we got to understand that uh, the contents of what they watch online is really, really important, what they watch and what they read. Unfortunately, some uh, parents are totally unaware of what their youth are being uh, watching or communica communicating or chatting with whom. <clears throat> they realize that a year later or two years later, the child has become atheist or the child has some odd sexual uh, desires and all of that. All of that, he doesn't have to have a friend, like a physical friend uh, at school or in the sporting club or the classes who misled him. It's all virtual. It's all on the social media. Yeah, we benefit out of the social media a great deal. It has, uh, you know, it's like a double blade. You can use it for something good, and you can use it to destroy families. So we have to know the contents of what he or she is watching. You have to put a filter <clears throat> on their phones to make certain that they do not browse anything which is uh, forbidden. And even in countries like in the United States and so on, they do that in libraries, public libraries and in schools because we have to be protective of our children. And this is our duty. So I totally support you. Uh, in your view that you have to control that. An hour every day, two hours every day at maximum uh, is fair enough, but also it is based on their achievement. You do not achieve your homework, you do not do your task, you're grounded. You don't get to uh, enjoy taking your smartphone and watching whatever you want to watch. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Michael from Gambia. Michael? Tayyib Abdul Latif from Spain. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Latif from Spain. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Latif. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, go ahead. I hear. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, God. How are you, brother Muhammad? Doing fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Uh, just my my question is like this, uh, brother uh, Saleh Muhammad. Uh, I just want to ask about a uh, special thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, just I want to ask about uh, one specific uh, subject about the halal meat. I just want to, when I travel uh, with my wife uh, to other country, and I find it so hard, you know, to find the halal meat. Then we are in one, uh, you know, like a small village, you know, and it's not easy to get the halal meat. So I was obliged to, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm obliged to eat this uh, this meat, which is not halal, or what shall I do? So because I was staying for like uh, one or two weeks, and so I need some, you know, uh, <laughs> the meat, you know, it's uh, obligatory, you know. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Please can you give us some as well? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Ahmed from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ahmed from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Sheikh, I would like to ask a question. I asked it last time, but I believe you didn't understand it. 
My question is, suppose I download a software like Adobe uh, that is pirated online, then I work on it and create a project and sell that project. Will the money earned from that project halal or haram? Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome, Ahmed. Thank you. Type. Michael from Gambia. Assalamu alaikum. Michael. Hello. Yes, assalamu alaikum. Yeah, hello. Go ahead, Michael. I hear you. I'm sorry, I have to skip your call. Please try again. Whenever you call, have your question ready, please. Um, a friendly reminder to all the viewers, please. When, once you call, you say salam and go ahead and present your questions immediately, okay? Uh, somehow the delay or trying to listen to me first and respond and giving your questions in segment, that would waste a lot of time. So once you are on air, just present your question right away. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Hakim from uh, Vienna. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, yeah, please. Hakim in Austria. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Now, Abdul Hakim. My name is Abdul Hakim Mutawakil. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Abdul Hakim Mutawakil. Okay. What is your question, brother? Please, my question is, uh, I changed my name uh, to a different name due to, due to asylum reasons. And I don't know if there is, uh, uh, if it's a sin or maybe I have. What is the new name? The new name is Ismail Wahab. And the new name hasn't half my father's name in it. What is the new name again? Ismail Wahab. Wahab, Wahab. Okay. Okay. I got your question. Abdul Hakim from Astoria. Brother Abdul Aziz from Holland. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask Wada. Abdul Aziz from Holland. Go ahead. Are you talking? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Ask Wada. Go ahead. Hello, Sheikh. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Go ahead, please. Okay, okay. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. I have one question, Sheikh. Uh, when you when you pray when you pray and for the for the first sitting in your tashahud, uh, can you like can you recite can you recite the can, can you recite Ibrahima Ibrahimia in the first tashahud? Okay, I got your question. Okay, and my second question, Sheikh, is uh, I am here in Netherlands as a student, and I want to know, like, if you, if it's possible to work as a as a delivery for for non-halal restaurants. For non-halal. For non-halal restaurant, but the rest, of the, like, you work like in company, they work with non-halal restaurant and halal restaurant as well. It's like company uh, name is Uber Eats. Okay, and, and what do you do? Delivery or what? What do you say? What is the nature of your job? What is your job description? Uh, the, the nature of the job, like you deliver, actually you deliver the food to the customer. Delivery? Okay. Yeah, deliver, yeah. Okay. All right, got your questions, brother Abdul Aziz from Holland. We got to take a short break. We have many questions, mashallah from the phone calls in addition to the questions I received on the page. So we'll take a short break and inshallah soon after that we'll tackle those questions. Please stay tuned.
messenger after a messenger after a messenger, ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, Prophet Hud alayhi salam, Prophet Saleh alayhi salam, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, Prophet Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A series of the lights of guidance, discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, learning from their lives, going through this exciting, amazing, informative, special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV, where we will discuss together, where we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode, learning from them, pondering upon their experience, meditating upon their life, relating to it, and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be discussing this series of lights of guidance. So be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation. So please join us on Huda TV. I will be with you in this amazing journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. we know that all the messengers and prophets of Allah they were supported by Allah to prove that they have the true message so we would like to ask Sheikh Ibrahim is it also true with Prophet Muhammad Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the evidence is to prove that he's a prophet of Allah is beyond doubt there are so many to the extent of which that the people of knowledge some of them would have to compile volumes of books that talks about the proof and the evidence of the prophethood of the Prophet والسلام, being the final messenger of Allah all of the previous messages and the proof of their prophethood is all combined and more in the life of the Prophet I feel very excited, but of course you too, dear brothers and sisters, you feel excited and interested to know more about the signs of prophethood. are the transmitters of the religion of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They carried his message and his legacy generation after another. And they are the one who carried this light to the whole world. The Life of the Muslim Scholars is a new series on Huda TV. Through studying their life and exploring many aspects of their lives, we will come to learn so many lessons, get motivated, and inspired by their stories, by their dedication for Islam and for the legacy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Through this series, I hope that it, we will be able, inshallah ta'ala, to get motivated not to achieve only success in the Akhirah, but in dunya as well. Join me, Walid Basuni, in this new series on Huda TV about the life of the Muslim scholars. Looking forward to having you. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, we have a couple calls before we begin. Sister Tabara from Zambia. Tabara. 
السلام عليكم تبارة اوكي بليز تراي اجين وي هاف براذر عباس فروم ذا يونايتد كينجدوم السلام عليكم عباس عليكم السلام في خرا جو هيد يا شيخ سفيد عليكم السلام جو هيد يا يا نو اي دونت بلوك تو واي Okay, Abbas, I'm, okay. I'm afraid I have to skip your call. Go ahead and ask your question, please. Okay, try again. And you can leave your question in the control. They will pass it on to me, inshallah. Go ahead, Tabara. Assalamu alaikum. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hi. If you have Hello? any questions, go ahead and present it, Tabara, please. Okay, brothers, collect her question, please. Um, Zishan from uh, KSA, working as an IT for a conventional bank is not permissible. I know that the bank, the conventional bank offers halal services and haram services. Always remember what Allah the Almighty said in the second ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number five. He said, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ تعاونوا ولا تعاونوا. What is permissible as far as taking a job, cooperation, and helping and assisting anything which is lawful? What is forbidden to cooperate in, to help in, to take a job, to participate, to take part in anything which is a sin or forbidden? So collectively, the conventional bank function dealing with usury and riba, and this is not permissible in Islam, and this is one of the destructive sense. Accordingly, whether you take a direct job or an indirect job that serves the conventional bank to offer its haram services, the job is haram itself. Of course, the level of haram varies from an individual to another. And it is mixed, halal and haram, no doubt. But is it permissible to take such job? No, it is not permissible. It only becomes permissible when one has no other source of income and he is in a state of necessity where I gotta pay the bills, I gotta pay the rent, I gotta pay utilities, I gotta buy the medication for my family. So one will take such job with limited access until they find what is lawful, not to enjoy it and to settle in it, to be promoted and to last until they retire because the earning out of this job is forbidden. So may Allah protect us again is that. Abdul Nasser from Sudan was diagnosed with uh, diabetes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure you and reward you for your patience uh, on your sickness. As far as fasting, not every kind of diabetes for, uh, doesn't allow the person to fast. You know, what you need to do is consult your doctor. Your doctor would advise you whether it's okay to fast or not okay to fast. Some diabetes, basically the patient cannot fast. They have to eat small bites. They have to take medications. They have to take the insulin. And some other diabetic patients, they can pay. Uh, fasting is actually helpful uh, for them. So not every diabetic person will be exempt from fasting. You need to consult uh, your internist or your uh, special doctor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shuraim from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Shuraim. Try again, not a problem. Sister Khadija from the USA. She said, What is the difference between the duha, namaz, or prayer, and the four rak'ahs before dhuhr? Let me tell you that. Uh, if, you, if you mean the four rak'ahs before dhuhr, yani before the time for dhuhr, any prayer that is offered between sunrise, after sunrise, and until noon, until the sun moves away from its meridian, 10 minutes after sunrise to 10 minutes before the sun moves away from its meridian, this whole time it's called duha prayer. If you pray it at its earliest time, it's called ishraq, 
according to you guys. If you delay it until like the last hour, it's called duha prayer. You can pray two, four, six, or up to eight. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Salatu al-awwabina hina tarmadu al-fisal. So that is the best time to pray the duha prayer, like uh, an hour before noon, when it's really the hottest. We'll talk now, inshallah, after this uh, call about the other four rak'ahs of Dhuhr. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Maya from the USA. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Huda. Sister Maya. Naam. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Maya. Alaikum, Sister I can hear you. Go ahead, and I can hear you too. Okay, I am calling you on behalf of my friend. Mm -hmm. um, um, she's been married for 10 years, and both her and her husband were undoc undocumented while they're living in the U.S. Mm. And the husband got sick three years ago, so he left the USA to go back to Africa. And uh, she has some documentation problem too, so she left for, for, for Canada. And the problem that she said that a month ago, her husband called her from Africa telling her that he was divorcing her. Mm -hmm. And he said it three times. So she called her parents in Africa and she let them know. Her parents doesn't want her to to spread that news. They think maybe he's just um, making a joke or whatever. So her parents sent send some people to the guy house and the guy say that he was serious about it and he's just divorcing her because he doesn't have any documentation to come back to the USA or to Canada. Mm. So he wants her after her Ida period to get remarried. Mm. So now she said that she's confused because he's saying one thing, but the parents saying that no, he hasn't divorced you. So okay. what is she supposed to do and when uh, he, that period is supposed to start in? Is that from the day that he called her or when, he's gonna, when she's going to get a real confirmation from him that he's really divorcing her? Okay. Got your question, Sister Maya. That one? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to divorce, what counts is the statement of the person who uttered the divorce or filed, filed for divorce or said it or texted. And bottom line, when a person divorces his wife, then he says, no, I was just joking. It doesn't count as a joke. The Prophet ﷺ said there are three things. Whether you're serious or joking, they're effective and they count and they're serious. One of them is divorce, marriage and divorce, okay? So that counts as divorce. If he already sent her a message that you're divorced, she's divorced. Within the idda, if it was the first and the second divorce, if he wants to take her back, he may do that. After the idda is over, provided that he did not divorce her three times, he can remarry her with a new marriage contract. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Um Bushra from the KSA, welcome to ask Huda, Um Bushra. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, I want to ask, is having uh, ghusl before Juma Salah compulsory as stated in the following hadith? Narrate, narrated Abu I got it. Ibn I got the hadith. Al yes, I got the hadith. No, it is not compulsory, Sister Bushra. It's compulsory only if the person happened to have intimate relationship with their spouse. Okay? The mandate in this hadith, it's a sound hadith. The mandate is waived with the practice that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not necessarily after every Jum'ah, you have to perform ghusl. It's only, it's highly recommended, whether you're a man or a woman, you're going for Jum'ah, young or old, to observe ghusl. It's recommended for Friday prayer. But if the person preceded that by having an intimate relationship, then ghost becomes mandatory, obviously, whether it's for Jum'ah or otherwise. Thank you, Um Bushra. Mudassir from India. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Shaykh. How are you, Shaykh? Wa alaikum assalam, Mudassir. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, Shaykh. Alhamdulillah. Shaykh, I have basically two no, small questions, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Hello? 
the first question is, Sheikh, how long the time of Maghrib actually now start and end? How, how long does it last? And the second question is, Sheikh, if you miss, uh, miss the Witr prayer, how am I uh, now next day? Is it needed to make it up for, you know, Qadar prayer for this? Okay. Yeah, Muddasar. Mud yes, Muddasar. Yes, I, I got the first question and I guess I, I guess the second question. You said how to make up the mess. Uh, second question is, uh, Mr. if I miss the Vitor prayer, mm. should I have to pray it later or next day? Is it I got the question too. Okay. Any other questions, Muddasar? No. Okay. So Khadija from the USA, back to your question. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said in the hadith of Umu Habiba, may Allah be pleased with her, it's a sound hadith, that praying 12 rak'ahs every day as voluntary prayers, Allah will build you a house in paradise if you maintain that on a regular basis. Out of those 12 units, the four rak'ahs before dhuhr. And the sunnah for any nafila prayer, it is to be offered two by two. That is in the hadith, Salatul Layli and also an nahar two by two. So whenever there is sunnah before asr, sunnah before dhuhr, sunnah after dhuhr, it's four rak'ahs, four rak'ahs, four rak'ahs. It is best to pray it two by two according to the prescription of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Also in another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever observes four rak'ahs, four units before dhuhr and four after, Allah will forbid his flesh Again, it's hellfire. Yani, hellfire will never touch his body. Uh, um, Abdul Latif from uh, Spain. Brother Abdul Latif from Spain, he travels heavily, mashallah, and he's asking about what can he do if he cannot find halal meat. After this call, assalamu alaikum. Sister Um Sana from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Um Sana. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I can hear uh, you the perfect. The first question is, uh, 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 what is the distance and the time period for making Qasr Salah? Distance from home and if I am, how many days I am staying away from home? The second question is, uh, we have a masjid in our workplace and uh, by the time I reach uh, sometime the, the congregation begins. So, I, after the congregation, I offer the four sunnah, which were supposed to be before the prayer, and four sunnah, which are supposed to be after the fard. So I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Okay, the answer to the second answer. question is yes, you're doing the right thing. If you miss the sunnah before the prayer, like in case of dhuhr, and can you pray it, can you pray it or make it up after dhuhr? Yes, you may do that. Uh, the distance for shortening the prayer is 83 kilometers. And as far as the time, according to the more view, four days. If you decide to stay beyond four days, then you pray full. And from day one, if you decided you knew that you're going to be staying in this place for one week or five days, more than four days, so you start praying full with the nawafil from the first day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mosfer from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Mosfer. Mosfer. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, welcome to ask Kuda. Go ahead, go ahead. So I have a question that a uh, link about Abdeskina and Hikles fund. I'm sorry, I, I didn't get your I'm question. Sorry, Mosfer. I didn't get Sir, I have a question about Tabut Sakina and Haikles Pani. Oh. <coughs> we'll review your question and see if we can get it, inshallah, Musfer. Okay, Abdul Latif from Spain. Uh, when he travels, he knows that the meat here is not halal. What can I do? Go see food. Go vegetarian. Never, ever eat or taste any meat which is not halal. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالْدَّمَ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ وَالْمُنْخَنِقَةُ وَالْمَوْقُوذَةُ وَالْمُتَرَدِّيَةُ وَالنَّطِيحَةُ وَمَا أَكَلَ السَّبْعُ وَمَا ذُبِحَ عَلَى النُّصْبُ 
illa ma dhakaytum wa ma dhubiha ala nusub so this ayah stated what is forbidden for us to taste of surah al maida maita is number 1 dead an animal which is shocked stunned with a stun gun shot electrocuted suffocated killed by any mean other than the uh, you know the obvious sacrifice which is a proper sacrifice slaughtering the animal in order to drain the blood uh, if the animal is killed by any other mean then the animal is called dead maita you don't eat its meat you don't eat its flesh it's haram whether it is cooked like stew meat or processed or made into shawarma or processed meat it's haram so we can uh, replace it with seafood or with vegetable because as you said that you're traveling you can take canned meat with you if you cannot uh, uh, be patient until you go home but if you know for sure that this meat is not halal don't taste it when does it become permissible to taste it look at the ayah again the ayah whenever Allah forbids anything says that in case of necessity you may eat فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ فِي مَخْمَصَةٍ غَيْرَ مُتَجَانِفٍ لِإِثْمٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ رَحِيمٍ And also فَمَنِ اضْطُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ So these two conditions, if it is a matter of necessity, if you don't eat it, you will die. You're starving, then go ahead even if it is even pork, it's okay to eat it. You know? Number one, the necessity. The second condition is you consume what is sufficient to make you survive. But alhamdulillah, mashallah, you go to the shopping centers, the grocery stores, there is plenty of food which is halal. So don't you eat haram meat unless if it is a matter of starvation. Don't you eat haram meat unless if it is a matter of sparing one's life. This is what Allah the Almighty uh, said. Uh, Ahmad from Pakistan. Pirated software programs, you pirate them, then you make business out of them and you sell your business. You ask me about pirating programs which are manufactured and produced by an entity or a person that's haram. We said only in one case, some students cannot afford to buy the programs and pay for it and they are desperately in need for it, for seeking knowledge for their education. So they are given uh, uh, you know a concession but a person in business you're already making money out of that and you're selling your products and you're selling your new programs and softwares so pay for the program that you're using to make money Wallahu ta'ala a'lu a'lu. brother uh, Abdul Hakim from uh, uh, Astoria he said that he is a refugee and uh, he had to change his name well, Akhi, I don't know about having to change your name, but anyway, the hukm for changing one's name from any name to another name, as long as it is the other name is a good name and a halal name, there is no problem. Uh, your name is Ahmad, you wanted to change it to Mahmoud or Mustafa or Muhammad, these are all the names of Prophet Muhammad. You, your name is Adam, you wanted to change it to <coughs> Zachary or uh, John, Yahya, no problem. Uh, sometimes the person is, uh, you know, in living in suspicion that because of my name, they will not give me uh, my residency, they will exile me, they will deport me, and all of that. It's not about the name. You know, you change your name. Are you going to change your complexion as well? Are you going to change your mother tongue? Uh, how will you speak native while you are an immigrant and a refugee as well? And you know, Muhammad Salah, is known worldwide as Muhammad Salah. Yes, they call him Mo, but what is his name? Muhammad Salah. If you're a good person, Alhamdulillah, shukla, in any society, you can leave your fingerprint and you can make your name known to others where they would respect and revere you. But for the name you said that you changed to Ismail Wahab, both are permissible, insha'Allah. Um, Naam. From Holland, we had Abdul Aziz who said that he used to be Christian. He accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. He's living in Holland. 
Uh, he said, in the first shahud, is it permissible to recite Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, which is known as As-Salaa al ibrahimiyya No, uh, Abdul Aziz, in the first shahud, in the middle tashahud, you recite at tahiyyatu lillah all the way to ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And you stop there. Then in the second tashahud, whether for Maghrib, for Isha, or for any prayer which is the last tashahud, like Fajr, it's only one tashahud. You recite the entire recitation, the Drood Sharif, or at tahiyyat or at tashahud including As-Salaa al-Ibrahimiyya. You say, at tahiyyatu lillah, then you go all the way, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala al Muhammad, to innaka hamidun majid. Working for delivery for stores which deliver halal and haram. If you deliver something halal, halal, beautiful. If you deliver peponi, pork, wine, that is haram. So your earning from what is haram will be forbidden. And the participation is also forbidden. So how would you go about it? Look for a halal job. Work in an electron, uh, electronic shop or a mechanic shop or any uh, grocery store that they sell vegetable. So if you can find and it's a matter of you know, surviving, again, necessity, so work with limited access to uh, pay your bills to suffice for your basic needs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, brothers and sisters, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا One who is dutiful to Allah, he's very keen to avoid the haram and he's very keen to do what is halal and avoid anything that would anger Allah. Allah promised that he will make him a way out. He will create for him an opening out of every hardship to deliver him out of every hardship and difficulty. Then furthermore, he said, What worries one most is the matter of earning provision and feeding yourself and family, paying the bills and the utilities and the rent. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't worry about this part. You take care of your duties and you fear me, I'll take care of you and I'll provide for you. How? From means you could never imagine. Uh, we have a couple more questions, but unfortunately, uh, one and out of time. So inshallah, we'll begin by answering them in the next question, including Sister Maria Lisa uh, Sidra. Uh, I read your long question, but unfortunately, we don't have time to answer it. So inshallah, next episode, I will begin by answering all your questions. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. Qulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen and